So handle on the side is Toby Mug. Handle at the back is Toby Jug. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Capital Vintage Charm School. Today we have Nicole Letts from Grand Millennial Shop. It's an online vintage retail store on Instagram. Um, Nicole is here to talk to us about Toby Jugs, and I'm so excited about this. Thanks for coming, Nicole. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here with you today, Stacey. So Nicole has the best eye for Toby Jugs, and we were talking before we started recording um, that I honestly had seen them, but I did not know what they were called, and um, as I kept seeing them on her feed, I was like, we have got to talk about these because I feel like it's kind of one of those things that everybody sees all the time, but they don't maybe don't know what it's called. Totally agree. And it's, that's actually what happened to me. Um, so my friend Paige at shop pink clutch, um, we were talking one day after hunting and she had said she was, had seen one at a store and she was like, I'm going to run back over there and get it. And I was like, I, I don't know what this, this is. She was like, oh yeah, you do. It's like the little like character guy that is in the shape of like a coffee mug. I was like, mm -mm, I have no idea what you're talking about. So she later had bought it and then we were out together again. And she was like, here, this is it. I was like, oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about now. And the more that I went shopping and went treasure hunting, the more I would come across them and started to really fall in love with them. Um, they're so quirky. And I feel like they're just that extra little bit of like sass yeah, um, in your house that I really like having. So what are they? So I actually have a couple of here, oh, that'd be great. A couple here with me. And so I feel like that's a good for people who don't know, I'll just show one. So this is um, a little Toby. So this is actually what's called a Toby jug. Um, he is a full bodied character and his spout is in the back, his little spout. And so typically they're wearing a um, tricorn hat and they're typically holding some beer and they look like they're you know from you know the what 1700s very uh, colonial right like we very just colonial yes yeah, thank you and we're having a cold brew yes. right? i was like williamsburg colonial is the right word uh -huh. so um they're just like a tavern guy they look like a little tavern guy um, and so for this one, it would be kind of, you would use his spout to pour like as a cream, like a creamer for your coffee or anything like that. And then the flip side or a different style would be the Toby mug and the mug has the handle on the side. Uh -huh. So that's how you tell the difference, which truthfully, I learned myself relatively recently. So handle on the side is Toby mug handle at the back is Toby Jug. That is so I cool. I didn't know that they had made both. I've only heard of the Toby Jugs. Well, and it's funny. I think it's just because, and I do it too. I just use that word in our interchangeably. And so I think, you know, it's interesting to know that there really is a difference. Um, but ultimately they all kind of look like this little colonial guy that's sitting, the signature look is the tricorner hat or the tricorn hat and the jug of beer and a full body. Um, so the full body is another key to knowing it would be called a Toby versus um, a little like sometimes it's just like their shoulders up and that's a little bit different. So what are what is the material? Is it so the they're ceramic right. um, and so they are sturdy and I think that they do have really cool details. So like this guy, um, he has, you know he has, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like hand painted hair. It's also a little textured in the ceramic itself. Um, very 3D. Um, so everything is kind of protruding, which is nice. Um, and then they, um, they're, they are fragile, I think, because they are made of ceramic. And so you will find like the occasional little like chip here and there, but I think that's part of what shows their age and makes them so charming. I agree. So wait, where did they first originate? Like, where are they from? So they are 
from as many things that are old are um, Great Britain. And it originated in that part of the world. They are based off of, I guess the origin story is a little bit varied as with many things that are old. So some people would say that the Toby is based off of Falstaff, which is a Shakespeare character who's in Twelfth Night. And I think he's in a couple of other plays. I think Henry the fourth maybe but there's like I mean there's a lot of Henry's but there's also a lot of like Henry plays so I'm not sure which one but they would say he's based off of Falstaff who is like this comedic relief character um but the guy who's always like kind of at the bar a little bit tipsy trying to get everyone else tipsy with them there's also this other guy called Toby Philpot which according to kind of what I've researched is that he was a 18th century drinker in Yorkshire and apparently he was very well known for yucking it up at the pubs and he inspired a song which also then turned into this you know little creation um and so they started being excuse me that's where they got the name Mm -hmm. according to legend we'll say um and so i think at that point they started being manufactured by a lot of different companies so you'll see some of them are stamped um on the bottom so this one is i, I haven't shown this one yet. this one's burly wear and it's stamped on the bottom so it would have been a burly wear piece some of them are made by staffordshire um you know just any of your prominent pottery and china and porcelain and ceramic companies of that time period potentially would have made some of these they became super popular can you imagine being such the life of the party that they start <laughs> making that they started making you know ceramics out of you i know i don't know if i feel like that would make me feel like very honored or <laughs> very concerned maybe a little bit of both but i think ultimately it's what it's cool is like you know, they all take on a little personality of their own. And so, you know, you will find the same style, but because they're all hand painted, you know, they're, they're all slightly different, which is kind of fun. Like their eyes might be a little bit different. Um, almost like, you know, a Staffordshire dog, for example. So what, so it's always a person and it's always a full body person. So, okay. There, I do believe, I would say typically, yes. If we're referring to like a Toby jug, it would, or a mug, it would always be a full bodied person. Um, however, according, there is this entire Toby jug museum that's in the, that's in Illinois. Okay. And they, according to them, you can also have it as people, or I'm sorry, as animals and um, other characters too. So one of the things that I think that I really want to add to my collection is a Staffordshire Toby. And the Stafford, it's a Staffordshire dog that's kind of sitting up on its hind legs and it is wearing yes, a right corner that. hat. Oh, he's got a hat? got a hat on some of them have hats on some of them don't but that's the that's one of the things that I'm really that I really want because I think that's like the best combination of both worlds that really is like your world's colliding with I know <laughs> that really is. it really is um so yeah so I do think they can be animals I tend to you know I like those. I feel like those have to be very unique to like draw me in. So like the, I, the idea of like the Staffordshire dog being paired with like the Toby style. So again, that would be a full bodied dog on its hind legs and then have the hat. And I think that's kind of what I like about it. It marries those two things. Um, and I really don't know that I've run across, I mean, like other animals, but I know that they exist because if you go to like I think there's like parrots I mean there's various animals and birds and things that make creatures some of the marks that you've seen what what are some of the manufacturers you said that this was something that like everybody kind of started making what 
what would be some of the companies that we should be on the lookout for or manufacturers? So staff for sure is definitely one of them. And that's something that I think is a pretty easy mark because it's so in the vintage community, I think the word staffer shirt is pretty well known between, you know, China and plates and serving pieces, as well as obviously like the figures and the dogs and things like that. There's also, so like this one is made by Burley Wear, um, and it's B-U-R-L-E-I-G-H wear. Um, and that would have been made in, it looks like Burley, England. Um, and so that would be another mark. I think made in England is something that you would be looking for. Okay. Um, but there's also a ton that will have, and I don't have one right now. I'm getting one. My friend Lola from the Lions, Maine actually found me one in Mississippi and she's sending it to me. It's more of a character style. Um, so it's the shoulders up and it's a princess. She's really pretty. I'm really oh. pumped about it. I was hoping it would be here in time, but it's not here, but she's from Japan. And so you will on the bottom, if you'll see like Japan, and I think typically that means occupied Japan. Okay. And so those would have been more, a more, you know, contemporary interpretation of the older ones. Um, but they've been made for centuries, which is kind of nuts. Are they still made? Uh, it appears as though they are still made, that they are still being made by several companies, but now they're like super contemporary. So think like Star Wars. Oh. You know, like um, I've, I know Star Wars for sure. I'm sure if, you know, any sort of like, I think character style mug where it's like the shape of a character might spill into that Toby category, or at least, you know, is likely inspired by the Toby category. So if it's, you know, I've seen like presidents. Yes. Like president mugs. Yes. And it's got the tricorn hat on. Would that be considered a Toby or is that a character mug? So I think that would cross into, so is it shoulder up? Yes. Or it's just shoulder pretend. Yeah, like bust, we would say like a bust style. So like shoulder up or like even just like the floating head. Right. Um, that would be considered a character mug, but in the same vein of a Toby style, which again is more of like the full body. Um, but it does still have like this, it's the same concept. It would just be like, he would just look like this <laughs> instead of like this. How cute he is. He's so cute. I love his little like. His hair smirk. is so fun. His hair is so fun. And notice like he's not wearing a hat, but his head is in the shape of so, like that tricorn, the tricorn shape. shape. Oh my God. He is precious. So I what know, are some of your favorite ones that you have found? Well, so this is actually one of them because I love the detail on his little, um, outfit I think that's awesome and I love that his coloring and his little like bow tie I believe I think I looked him up at one point and I he's a Charles Dickens character and I don't remember I'm trying to remember like the details but I believe I remember him being like a little bit shady business okay, um, I know <laughs> but so he's I just really like his outfit and I actually I'll show you how I use them so I have him on my bar cart with um, star sticks and him. Oh, he is so the, cute. Is it hard uh, to decide who gets kept and who gets sold? It is. I think what ends up happening is I will find one that just really speaks to me at that moment. And so he'll stay with me for a while until I find something that maybe speaks Louder. to me a little bit differently. So <laughs> I'm excited to get the one from my friend Lola at the Lion's Mane because it, I don't know really how big it is. Um, and again, it's a princess kind of, I don't even, almost like Robin Hood-esque, like Lady Marion. Like that's kind of like how she's dressed. Um, and so I'm excited to get that one and see if like she's a comparable size or if I'm going to display her differently. But I love the idea of filling them with like, depending on the size, so like this guy, he's pretty big. I don't have a type tape measure right here, but I mean, you could, he's big enough for like flowers. And I just think that would be so cute. Like on a little bedside table for guests, like, you know, peonies kind of spilling out of him, um, something really full and happy. So um, yeah, I think there's a lot of ways to use them. And 
I think that kind of depends on what gets kept too, because I'm like, okay, well, like if this one, so now what's going to happen, I'm going to end up keeping this. I was going to say, so I don't keep things. I adopt things temporarily until oh, I yeah, have something else that needs yeah. to be adopted. And then yeah. that gets, and so. A friend of mine calls it fostering antiques. Yes, yeah, that's, that's that. Yes, we are, we are foster caring. I will clean you up. I'll spit you up. I'll make you feel good about yourself. And then I'll put you back out into the world. <laughs> yes, no, that's exactly, that's exactly how I am. And you know, some things I'm like, I find and I'm like, okay, this is a forever thing. Um, I do that a lot with art, but you know, with the Tobies, I think it's kind of fun to mix them up until I find the elusive, you know, Staffordshire. Um, I'm going to be on the lookout for you. Dog one. Thank you. I've seen them a couple of times. The, when, the problem is that when I see them, they're typically sold in pairs. And I'm like, no, nope, I just want one. I'll buy the other one. So if you oh, great. Pair, okay, perfect. Perfect. The other one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to that. I am. I really do okay. want one. All right. All right. Cool. Hey, so I had to ask you this. Do you name them? I do not name them because a lot of them will come with names because oh. they are based on other characters. So they might not be. So like, I mean, this guy, oh, this is interesting. He is Mark. So this is by Wooden Sons, England. Okay. Oh, and, and it's so, Mark Toby. Okay. He's actually Mark Toby, which I think is so interesting. So, um, and I don't know that I've actually seen that. So maybe this is like the OG. I need to do some research on him. Um, but that um, sometimes the mark of their of what they're called will be on the bottom. So like if it's a it's it's fall staff, for example, you might see fall staff either written on the bottom or across the side. And that's the character name. It's not the name of the like artist. It's the character of the Toby itself. Um, and I've seen there's another one. Mr. I, I used to have Mr. Pickwick from the Pickwick Papers, which is the Charles Dickens yeah. um, story. And he was really charming, but it was just, it was just his head. Um, and so same sort of concept, and, but he was a really good, and like by liter literature, he is a kind, like sweet, good character. So I really enjoyed having him, but then, you know, kind of as treasure hunters do, I found my next one and you know, well, let's, can we talk price real quick? Of course. Yeah. What do you consider a good price point for one of the like standard size jugs? So like a standard size one, and I would say any of the three that I have are pretty standard size. There are also a whole bunch of them that come like itty bitty, um, and even itty bittier. So I have a client who collects them that are like if they're under two inches, which is so, so tiny. Um, but I would say, I think standard, I would say is around four to five inches. So like this guy, I really should get a tape measure, but so like this guy or my other little yellow turquoise and yellow coat man. Mm -hmm. So I think I would look for anywhere between it just, I would say between like 35 to 60 depending on like what you are looking to spend and the size so you know anything for me like when I'm selling them on grand millennial anything that's pretty tiny is typically under I would say anywhere like under 36 ish anything that's bigger than that is going to be closer to like that $40 to $50 range um, and then I've also sold pictures which are basically large jugs that have been turned into pitchers um oh, not turned into but you know that the yeah. large pitcher size and those can be upwards of like 75 to 90 because of the detail and the age and all of that kind of stuff but um i think if you i think starting at 30 and going up from there you're in a good you're in a good spot okay. and there really are popular at antique stores a lot of antique dealers have them so it just takes kind of scoping out right. the um you know the cases and the bookshelves and seeing what's available I rarely go on a scour a scouting or a treasure hunting trip and don't find one you have the best yeah. Them. I love when they pop up on your on your Instagram feed when you're selling them because they're just precious 
Thank you. I think they're so cute. And like I said, the women are my other favorite kind to find because for some reason, the women always, well, A, I think it's unique. And I don't know truly if it, I think like women were very much included as a part of like the characterization when they were building, you know, the Toby Jug empire. But I just find them to be rare and a little harder to find than the men. And so when I find the women, I just think they're so much, they're so fun. I mean, you know, they're wearing dresses and so their, their outfits are a little more detailed and there's like ruffles or, you know, I found one where like the little, um, I was going to do them. I had the little like spout or the little handle is like a bunny right here. And then it goes into the handle. So cute. Um, and you start, and for some reason, the women always look like grouchy like do they remind me of the innkeepers from Les Miserables yeah like literally that's what I see when I think of like the Toby the ultimate to- Toby couple yeah they, like, dance around and seeing like speak like a uh, master of the house and that's kind of like what I think of um oh, well so it, the, the the crazier it looks like the more I'm into it So as far as rarity, is there like a color that would be most rare? Or you said that you don't find women as often. Is there anything else as far as rarity that we should be on the lookout for? Like, oh, look, this is a pink one. You never find those or? Well, I definitely think what I find interesting is I always look at their, the color of their outfits. So I do think that like, I actually sold one over the weekend that was wearing like a pink cummerbund and like a yellow top or a yellow coat. And I thought that was really cute and a little bit different. Um, so I do look for colors. I think women, I also, I mean, like I said, like that one Staffordshire yeah. style dog with the hat, I think those would be unique. Um, I hesitate to use the word rare because I don't, they are super popular. So I don't know that they're rare per se I just think it's all about like the style that you are looking for I would not buy one just they're so common I wouldn't buy one just because you see it I would wait until you see one that you really love so if you I mean I'm assuming most of the time if you're finding these at antique stores and stuff they've been cleaned up for you but let's say you're at an estate sale and you find one and it's dusty and just kind of gross yeah what is your favorite way to clean them up so I typically as with anything old I mean I will just use like some like I put it in a foamy sink bath of like you know some dial (laughs) and let dial kind of do its thing um and really because they're durable I mean because they are made like I mean they're made for beverages you know they're made for liquid so treat them like you would a coffee mug um but I would hand wash obviously um and then you know give it a good dusting every now and then you don't want I don't want to be like pulling my stir sticks out of this guy and like find dust bunny up in there yeah (laughs) so rinse them out and I definitely think you could take like a little like take a q-tip with some like water and try and like get in some of the crevices to clean the dust because they are very detailed. So you do have a lot of like bins and crevices and, you know, they are the coats and the clothes and everything are that 3d. So you want to kind of clean them up best as you can, but, um, it's pretty easy. They're pretty, they're pretty easy to take care of, which is really nice. So besides the bar cart, do you like to keep them kind of clustered together or do you scatter them around your house? It really depends. So I think you could do both. So one of the things I think is also fun is a te- the teeny tiny ones using them for like toothpicks. If you're doing a shark, if you have a charcuterie, um, you could also put them on your coffee table. Like you obviously would need one smaller than the ones that I have here, but you could put like your taller matches in them to be able to light a candle. So I definitely think you can scatter them, but you know, I've heard that it's really good to display collections together because it makes a stronger impact. So I think if my collection were to get any bigger than it is at the moment, um, I would probably put several on the bar cart. And so maybe I have like one with my glass stir sticks, one with, um, you know, flowers, and then one with like my bar tools in it. So that like the, and you know, just kind of put them all together, kind of standing watch um, in that area. But I think they'd also be cool for like, depending on the size, you can use them for like your coffee pods. 
um, or on your coffee bar. It's another, I think, little cute or your Splenda, another cute, you know, use for them. So I think it really is whatever you, whatever works for you. But I do love the idea of putting one in a guest room. It's such a great conversation starter. It's like, you know, if you have, you can either put like pens in it with like a little notepad or flowers or, you know, even like toothbrushes, like in your guest bath. Like if you have, if you want to supply your guests with like, you know, anything they might be missing, like you could use this. And then your guests like, tell me about that little like man that's in the bathroom. <laughs> Who's the dude in the bathroom? <laughs> Don't mind if I do tell you about the little man in the bathroom. That's my Toby. <laughs> His name is Falstaff. That is cute though. <laughs> that's a really fun idea. Yeah. I'm always trying to find new fun because, you know, I feel like the bathrooms where, where you can get a little, a little sassy if you want. Oh, weird. It, yeah, it's time to get weird in the half bath or the guest. Yeah, bathroom. no, totally. Um, so that is such a fun idea. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's fun. And I think it's, you know, as with all things interiors, like have fun with it. And I think this is another, I think people would see this and be like, I have no idea what to do with it. And I feel like, you know, just thinking a little bit out of the box. And I think honestly, a bar or a coffee station is like the best place to stop or a coffee table. Like those are your best bets for like starting to be a little quirky, but then like I, I challenge everyone to put one either in your guest room or your guest bath and like, just wait and see what happens. You know, when we can have guests again, like, right. Just wait and see what happens because I guarantee you someone's going to be like, tell me about that little guy in there. I kind of want one for my makeup, um, for my Whoa, brushes. Great idea. I mean, if, especially if you found a lady, super cute your makeup brushes that's a great idea super cute I can see like one of the small ones with like the tweezers oh with the brush so smart I'm on this I've recently decided that every charm school I do I'm going to collect one piece on <gasps> that's it's, such a good idea most bizarrely eclectic collection but I just fall in love with everything when I do these because you learn about them and you're like oh the that had a meaning or you know whatever and then people start telling stories about how they use them and I just completely am a sucker and sentimental and fall in love with these things I'm the same way um so we'll put like all the Pyrex in the kitchen and the Toby jars in the bathroom <laughs> I think that's great and people are gonna be walk around your house and be like your house is so fun because you have so many cool things <laughs> and you have a story for all of them and that's oh, the other thing a time period Stacey yeah <laughs> yeah no you have a great story for all all of your pieces well, Nicole, if you have a quick minute, I'd love to ask you a couple of questions that I ask everybody to get to know them a little bit better. Of course. So what is your China pattern? This is such a great question because my China pattern, I have regrets about. <gasps> Ooh, I want to hear this. I'm sure, I'm sure she'll watch it because when I, she, okay, so my China pattern is Linux Federal Platinum. It's very basic, which I thought I really wanted at the time. Because then I was like, I can mix and match. And of course, I also got the um, like Kate Spade, like polka dot to go with it, which I do love. And it is fun, fun and quirky. But as I've gotten more mature in my style and more confident, I think, and what I like, I do wish I had something a little more playful and colorful. So while the, by the federal platinum is a really great base, um, We'll see if I end up keeping it for forever. I mean, I might. Are you collecting I, a new pattern? Kind of in your yeah. hunts? So yes, for I'm a big like holiday China hunter and person. We did not have that growing up. So I didn't have any sort of, you know, no holiday China to be like passed down by any means. But it's just something that I've kind of wanted. So I'm debating right now between, you know, having the federal platinum and using that more for like my spring holidays because I definitely have a china pattern for Thanksgiving and also for Christmas. So what do you use for that. So for Thanksgiving, this is actually one of my favorite estate sale finds of all time. Johnson Brothers Wild yeah, Johnson Turkey. Br yes, oh that is such a pretty Thanksgiving um piece. It's beautiful Perfect. and it's you know it's the birds that are in flight and so I think it's just really really pretty and colorful so I have 12 wow of those that I got at an estate sale and I got all 12 of them for 60 dollars what 
Yeah, they're like a hundred dollars a plate. And so I'm yes! thinking what the state sale company meant to do was price them at sixty dollars a plate, but they didn't. They just priced the whole stack. And girlfriend, when I say I ran out of that house, I ran. I mean, Paige was with me. We bought a whole bunch of stuff, and I was like, I gotta go. Yeah, like I gotta go put this in the car yeah, before, before they go. realize what I have done. We gotta yes. get. Yes, exactly. So I have wild turkey for Thanksgiving and I've collected enough at this point where I think this fall, I will actually get it out earlier in the season and use it every day. Um, and then for Christmas, I started collecting the Bernadette, Bernadeau Grenadier, which is the, it's by Bernadeau and it's basically toy soldiers that are, that rim the outside of it. So cute. It's really cute. So I started my collection for that. And then they actually discontinued the pattern. And I'm still kicking myself because I found it at an estate sale like two years ago. And it was, but it was right after Christmas. And I couldn't imagine Bringing like it. taking it home, finding somewhere to put it, spending the money on it. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't get it. And I wish I had because now it's discontinued. But I think between like replacements and eBay and all of that, I'll be able to get some. So, um, so those are my your kind of, you said this for Thanksgiving but do you use like your Christmas stuff all throughout December or do I would like to that's my plan okay. and so I would like to kind of do the whole thing so what I did this year I actually got out all of my sterling silver and I swapped my stainless out with my sterling and we used sterling for the entire month of December and it made me so happy um and so I feel like if I incorporate china and um even like my Christmas, like juice glasses and all of that, even if I like incorporate that more into everyday use, it'll just like, you know, an extra dose of special for the entire season. So I've started do well, I have like nice ones and then I have like tiny finger plates that I let the kids use. Um, but it is so fun to have like, you know, December 1st, it's like, bring up the Christmas plate. Yes, no, I agree. They're not, they're not the nice ones. I think I got them for like 50 cents a piece at a thrift store. What makes you happy? Yeah. And I, I don't care if it breaks because it was 50 right. cents and it's right. not, the, you know, every day, you know, blue willow that we use. So it's something fun and different to look at. Um, but I want to start doing that for like, I didn't do it this year, but like, I was like, oh, that'd be so fun if we did that for Easter. Yes. Even if I could find some like really cute, um, like eagle plates or something like that to you yeah. like fourth of July. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm start doing this for all the seasons. I, I know. I think it's fun to incorporate that kind of stuff. So that's why I'm kind of thinking like, mm, we'll see if I what happens with the federal platinum. I'll probably keep it because I'm a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> Proud of it. But you're right though. It's a good basic to be able to put like different salad plates and bowls and stuff like that on. It is. It is a good basic, which I like. So we'll see. But I'm, you know, I'm always noodling. So what are you currently on the hunt for, for your house? Well, I am always on the hunt for my house. Um, I think right now I can't seem to get my head off of um, drapery. So I have, yeah, so I, I found, I have drapery in three places, but I really need it in like three more places. So I'm kind of on the hunt for that. I keep late night eBay searching, um, you know, pinch pleat chintz in the hope that something good's going to pop up. Um, well, call me before you put a bid in because you and I might end up being bidding against each other. I'm on the hunt for the same thing right now. And I, it's, it's funny because I keep thinking like, oh, I'm just going to get it made. And then I start thinking about it and I'm like, or I could just get it at a state sale for a fraction of the cost. A fraction because so my drapery that I'm looking at right now that's in my like living room dining room area I actually got it at an estate sale I got six panels for I want to say three hundred dollars maybe 150 I can't remember what what I was able to talk them down to 150 would be amazing I think it was fifty dollars a panel so whatever that whatever the math on that is so 300 right so even still, so they're, they're pinch pleat, they're double lined. 
with the insides black out. They have a beautiful like trim on the outside of them. And I was able, I mean, it was a steal. Now I had to go get them hemmed and cleaned, but even oh, after yeah. that, it was still outfitting an entire room for, you know, under a thousand dollars, well under a thousand dollars. I know. And you, I don't know about you, but I feel like sometimes I live in such bargain worlds that when I have to actually go yes. do something normal, oh, yeah. what? How yeah. much is that? Oh yeah, for like, sure. Oh yeah, that's that's why I live in my estate thrift auction bubble. <laughs> me, too, me too. So I'll but always looking for drapery. And then honestly, just like little things here and there I'll pick up. I mean, probably every weekend my husband and I have like an hour of hanging to do because I will have found like art or um need to move something around or I found you know sconces that I want to use or something so there's always a little a little project on the weekends <laughs> my um my request have started with you're gonna kill me but and yes he knows that it's time to run to the hardware store when I start with you're gonna kill me but so mine is so I'm a golf widow so mine is golf course this sounds great go as long as you want and then expect two hours with me and a camera when you get home <laughs> get it all out on the golf course yep enjoy your time <laughs> what is your favorite thing that you've ever found what's your favorite all time so I think besides the Johnson brothers you know wild turkey I definitely think this wallpaper that's behind me, which um, is by Zuber AC. So it's a French company. And Paige at Shop Pink Clutch and I, as we often do, were hunting together. We were at a lovely home in the Buckhead neighborhood of Atlanta. And it was in a closet, like someone had done their entire closet in this wallpaper. And we're like, oh, that's pretty like interesting, whatever. We go upstairs and we found like four unused rolls in the linen closet and like still wrapped. And it was $5 a roll and Paige found it Wild. and she was like, I'm not leaving this behind. And I was like, oh, I really think I could actually put that somewhere in my house. I mean, we do this a lot. We're like, I'm not leaving this behind. Like, it doesn't matter if we have anywhere for it. We're taking it home. Totally. So I'll like, give it to the mailman. I'm yes. just not leaving it here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So she said, okay, well you buy it and you take it. So I did. And it's awesome. And come to find out like this wallpaper company is like one of the most renowned wallpaper companies in the world. It's in the White House. Um, Jackie O had it taken out of a house that was being demolished and moved into this wall, this the White House. It's typically done in like mural form. So it's done in panels and you can do that. Um, Patricia Altschul from Southern Charm. She has it in her house, a similar, the same maker, not the same pattern. Then one of my sweet followers on Grand Millennial actually messaged me one day and she was like hey I think that we have the same wallpaper so she actually reached out to it's called Zubair so she reached out to Zubair and they sent her the information from their archives about the paper and so she and I no both, way so cool she happened to have just she said she bought well I feel like she lives in Florida and she bought the, her house and her house had it in her dining room. And she just always assumed it was Brunswick yeah. because the rest of her house, when she bought it, had Brunswick paper in it. And she's like, I just assumed that's what it was. And it's actually this other stuff. Fine. And it's such a cool connection for us because she, yeah, really cool. Um, and I love that like she reached out and then she's like shared it with me and we both like, we're never taking this down ever. Yeah. Like it lives, it lives with us for, for all of time you could line the, my casket with it right like it's oh never look I still have an entire roll that's a great idea and there you go there you go I love that. so what's the one thing that you never bought or that you were like going back and forth about was it the china set that you really wish now you would have bought what haunts you that you didn't buy I have two things that haunt me that is one of them definitely the Bernadier set because it was such a good deal like I just I think it was like $500 for 12 place settings like it was I should have done it. I really should have. Um, and the other thing is kind of funny. 
And so my sterling pattern that I collect is buttercup. And I was at an estate sale and they had like nine buttercup spoons, I think. And I was like, oh, I don't really need just spoons. And like, it was a really, really awesome deal. And the lady tried, like the estate sale person tried to like, she was like, I'll give you a deal, like da, da, da. And I was like, no, 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 pages with me. And I regretted it because when I got all my sterling out for Christmas, like I said, that I used for the entire month of December, of course you use like a million spoons. Right. So like, why didn't I get extra spoons when I had the opportunity? Like, because you use it for coffee and then like, and end up, what ends up happening is like, my husband will use a coffee spoon and then I'll use a coffee spoon too. So, you know, it, it just drags. You take so, a bite of something you're cooking, you throw yes, it, take another bite. Yes. Yeah. Like, why didn't I get the extra spoons? So those are my two. Those are, those are good ones. I always feel like it's something that you like want to start collecting that you didn't yeah. and then that haunts you. And then like, I don't know. I'm always like, okay, something else is going to find me. Like, yes, but the It'll find, yes, always, there'll always be yeah, more. Those are hard. Those are hard to leave behind, sure. oh. but there will always be more. There will always, that's how I always look at it. Like there will always be more. I know. So what, if you had to choose between an estate sale or a flea market, what would you choose? Mm, I would probably go to an estate sale because I like to be inside. And sometimes I feel like flea markets are indoor outdoor experiences. And I'm more of like an, <laughs> an indoor kind of gal. I was a Girl Scout for many years and did the whole outside thing. And now I'm an inside girl. So yeah, I think yeah. I would choose estate sales. Um, I also like, it's like, you know, a little bit of like voyeurism in the sense that you get to like experience someone's house. And I like to see like how houses are laid out and like the collections and how people use things. And, you know, I think it's just, it's, I'm a visual person. So I think it's, you know, it kind of plays into that a little bit too. I like seeing how people pair things. Yes. So like, I like when I'm going to make this up. I like when people have a reading lamp, you know, like a, a really pretty old brass, like hangover type reading lamp next to like a table lamp. Yes. And I'm like, Oh, you can do that. You can put two yes. next to each other or, you know, they'll do things like that to where I'm like, Oh, I never thought I never thought I could do that. Or I never thought to put, I don't know, that kind of light switch next to that kind yeah. of or whatever. Well, and, and things like even mixing like fabric patterns, you know, you'll see like, or like rugs, especially in like your older traditional homes, like you'll see those. I think people are so, these days are so like, they're not really as excited about like a rust colored, you know, like Persian or Oriental rug as people, as probably years ago, but yeah. then you come into some of these houses and you see how they've taken that, like the reds and the oranges and they've worked them in with like their floral drapery or their, you know, upholstered sofa. And you're like, wow, like that really does look so great together. And so just kind of reminding yourself that when you're choosing classics, it's never out of style. You know, the kitchen might not be updated because the appliances aren't updated or like you might have a blue bathroom, but like your furnishings, if you make good classic choices from the get-go, it's timeless. Would you rather go to a thrift store or an auction? Um, a thrift store. The auctions, I haven't really dabbled much in and they make me a little nervous. I feel like I'd be like really real paddle excited. Um, do you do online auctions ever? So I have perused online auctions and I have bid on things, but it's not my forte. So Elizabeth White is a great friend of mine and she used to own a PR company in Atlanta called Domino, but she's mm -hmm. notorious for her estate sale finds. She's been featured on Southern Living, um, and, and some other publications and she's so good at it. And she oh, I, I've drooled a lot about auctions. Book. Yes. So she's great at auctions. So I just need her to kind of like teach me more. Y'all don't need auctions. I've watched the stories that you and Paige and some of the other, you know, gals in Atlanta, y'all, those estate sales have been 
killing it. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. But we also have great auction houses here. So I think that's something that I, you know, would like to learn more about. It's funny. I had the same conversation with Paige, but you know, DC is a bizarre place to estate sale because you walk into somebody's house and you're like, oh, this is a diplomat or oh, yeah. this is a senator or, you know, whatever. And so that's gotta be surreal. It is, but it's weird because I feel like now after COVID, it's just, it's just dried up. It's just not yeah. been the same level of, I always tell this story. Um, I'm sure people have heard me say this a million times, but I walked into one, one time and it was John Glenn, like the astronaut. And mm -hmm. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. That's just an average Friday um so it's you know it's so you end up with these like historical things here yeah and people are so well traveled because you know they're in the CIA or That's whatever true. it is um but I feel like that has just I don't know I don't know if people just aren't doing estate sales right now because of COVID here I don't know what's going on but there is so much jealousy I have for y'all because I, I keep watching these stories and y'all are just killing it at these estate sales. Well, thank you. It's really fun. And you know, it's one of those things that I, I truly, I do it for fun. Like, of course, you know, the shopping is very integral to grand millennial shop and it's, you know, what you spend money to make money, if you will. But it's also just something I do that brings me like peace and it's fun. And it, I just, I love it. And it's, you know, I'm always calm when I'm, you know, shopping, unless someone's on my shopping path. I hate that. Like, Hey, if you're in an, an antique mall and someone's on your same like course. Yes. Me like, too. We got it. And they're like over your shoulder. Though. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, okay. okay. Here's a different path. You're on my path. Thank you. Yes. Um, but I just, I always feel very like calm and in a good place when I'm sourcing. It's just a nice, thing for me to do that centers me that's so great yeah. so what is your most prized family heirloom so that is a tough question I feel like I have a couple of things that I feel like really stick out to me of course I have some of my um matriarchal like jewelry so I have you know a dinner ring from one of my grandmothers and I have um another sweet little art deco ring from another grandmother. Um, so that I'd have some of my grandmother's sterling, which my grandmother, my mom's mom was a very humble person. She was not she, very average home, did not entertain, loved, I mean, entertained in the sense of like family style dinner. Like sure. there was not crystal, there was not silver, but she grew up in a time when all of those things were really prevalent. And so I didn't even know that she had sterling until I really started collecting it. And so I've since my uncle has her set cause he's a big like home chef and entertainer, but I have like her demi toss spoons. And I just think about, they just sat in a drawer. They even were in the original like plastic bags that they came in. Oh my, God. my grandfather gave them to me. So I have that. We also have my husband's grandmother's dining room table. Oh, and means. I really enjoy having that because it's, it's old and it's classic. And I mean, it's scratched, but it's still really, um, beautiful. And I like that we have it. Um, I have it paired, not with the chairs that came with, which is a, my way of like making it more me. Um, but that's probably the piece of furniture that I have that I really love. To me, though, that's what this whole grand millennial thing is about, right? Yes. Taking that table and adding your flair to it with the chairs that you want, but making yes. sure that we're still keeping the like the heirlooms alive and well yes. and using these, these pieces that, you know. Yes. And keeping the integrity of the piece is important to me. So like this table is mah mahogany and it's definitely not like a candidate for painting. I would, I would be mortified if I painted it. Um, but I think. I can't handle that. No, like, I can't either if I'm being honest. But I think that, you know, I do have some like Louis chairs that are around it. I'm sitting in one actually, and you can see like it's painted. Um, but you know, it's just kind of that yeah, you know, mixing and matching the family stuff with your finds and you know, the 
old with the new. So now, did you grow up in a house that used these sorts of things and collected these things? Is your mom a big collector? Mm -mm. See? My mom always, yeah, no, my mom loved, loves antique stores and loves antiques. And I definitely think that's where I got it. I would say my great aunt, my, um, my mom's mom's sister, my aunt, Chris, she loved antiques and she inherited. So my grandmother's family, her parents owned a furniture store in Montgomery, Alabama, and so they had a bunch of, you know, classic furniture from that furniture store that was passed down. Well, my grandmother didn't want it. So it all went to my great aunt and her home was just filled with old things. And when I was little, I remember it kind of felt a little intimidating because there were places in her house that like I didn't want to touch or didn't feel like comfortable going into. Um, and she had like, some odd kind of things too but you know I think that's kind of where I get it from like it feels now very comforting to me and it feels like you know a piece of her and a piece of them kind of with me even though I don't have as many of their items um I have that you know desire to have it in my house and it's fun to think about them when you find things I love being able to really be like, oh they would love this this yes. would send so-and-so, you know, crazy. They'd be so excited to have this in their house. Yes, exactly. And I will say my mother-in-law has a beautiful home and is a big entertainer, like loves to use her crystal and her sterling and her china and loves mahogany furniture, um, really has a great classic traditional look. And I mean, I've been with my husband, we've not been married for this long, but we've been together for almost 14 years. And I think that has, her style has influenced me um, as I've kind of come into my own and my, my home. And, you know, at first I was like, oh, but now I'm like, I kind of love it. Like, I kind of love that um, it's been such a strong influence. Isn't it funny, the older you get, the more you start appreciating that stuff. And it's like, yeah. you know that you would, but you didn't yeah. really know that you would. And now you're like, can I have all of your- <laughs> Oh yeah. She has, <laughs> yeah. She has this awesome like French settee that is upholstered in a like beautiful green and white silk stripe <gasps> and it is phenomenal <sighs> and he always says she's gonna get it recovered. I'm like if you recover that I'll never forgive you. <laughs> no, and, I, and I'm not taking it. Like, she's like, I, I want you to have this. I'm like, thank you, but I'm not taking it if you recover it. So I want you to think about that. <laughs> I want it as is. That. I want it as <laughs> is. The only time an as is sticker is actually something I'm looking forward to finding. That's right. That's right. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for doing this today. This was so much fun. I loved learning about this. I think it's going to be such a fun thing to be on the lookout now um for these toby jugs and mugs now we know the difference yes. jugs and mugs jugs and mugs um everyone this sounds is kind of inappropriate I know. <laughs> <laughs> the grumpy jugs and mugs huh? that's right that's right um well, thank you for having me let's with grand millennial shop on instagram her tag is going to be down here Go follow her. Her finds are fantastic. Nicole, you are the best. Thank you so much for doing Thank this. Thank you, Stacey. This is so fun.